Everybody, welcome to EdChat Interactive. My name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm uh, hosting EdChat Interactive tonight. Uh, we have Denise C. Wright, who's a NASA ambassador and um, also a 3D Bear ambassador, and we'll be she'll be talking about ap applications of augmented reality that allow you to teach STEM projects around astronomy, space, space missions, and astronauts. And so I'm going to um, hand, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to hand it over to Denise and I'll be in the background, but also taking questions. If you have questions, um, you know, uh, ra raise your hand or uh, put a question in the chat. And if you want to ask it yourself, we'll um, unmute you and, you know, allow you to ask it directly. If you want me to ask it, I'll, I'll pop up and I'll ask it. And I know there's an opening screen and a uh, pair deck that uh, Denise wants you to go to. So Denise, um, take it away. Sure. Hi, my name is uh, Denise Wright. Uh, I am located in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I am a STEM educator and I'm really excited and very honored to be here this evening. Uh, we're going to try to make this interactive because we're all learning um, through remote learning. I know there's many webinars and um, lots going on in terms of what's going on with the world. This is our platform for learning right now. So if you can go to joinpd.com and then the actual letters to um, get into that session are Y-T-R-Y-X. And um, it's going to make this evening a little bit more interactive. Uh, I was, I'm a 22 year veteran teacher, um, seven of my years were online. So uh, I like to really try to make uh, learning interactive when we're in an online environment. Um, I am currently back in the classroom again with students about three years ago, back in 2017, I took a STEM position um, down the street from my home and little did I expect that, you know, I'd be using all my online learning skills again as a teacher um, right now. So, um, so anyway, at any point, if you haven't had an opportunity to join, I know you probably have me in like one, the Zoom in one web tab and this in another web tab. Um, it's joinpd.com and it's YTRXYX and you can see that in the corner as well. So I'm going to start off just like I would start off with my classes. Um, we're going to talk about using augmented reality um, in astronomy, space missions, and astronomy using 3D Bear. Uh, astronomy and NASA is very close to my heart. Uh, I'm very passionate about astronomy. It's one of my hobbies. It's something that I'm interested in. And um, so you can see, hopefully, on your pair deck, because I was testing it out as a student today, on one side, you'll see my slide. And on the other side, if you want to use your cell phone and follow along and actually dig download the app 3D Bear, uh, please feel free to do that or you can do that at the um, end of our session today. Um, also right now, um, if you could, um, there's a Padlet coming up, um, you'll see one on one side and then um, I'm sort of controlling the slides on the other side. Um, there is a map of the world and it's this, this is called Padlet. It's a collaborative feature um, that you can use with students or during um, out public outreach, or if you are in a classroom. Um, and it's a great feature that you can actually um, post, you know, student videos and pictures. And we're gonna actually mark everywhere in the world where we're from right now. So I can see what our representative uh, group is from. So you can just click on the plus there in the corner, hopefully, and be able to do that. So let's see what we're, what, I'm gonna check it out and see what I'm seeing right now, so. Okay. All right. I see South Carolina. I see a lot of people in the U.S. I see New York. Amazing. Tennessee. Atlanta. Okay. All right. Great. All right. So um, I see people on the West Coast, Las Vegas area. Amazing. Okay. Great. So this is something called uh, Padlet. It is if you were remote, you're remote. We're all remote teaching right now. So it's a great uh, platform to share information live. So I see a lot of us populating on that map in that corner there. So, and even if you're on that map, you could zoom out and also see what, what other par parts of the country people are from. So um, you have the ability to do that as well. So lots of East Coast and West Coast people um, all the way up and down the coast. Amazing to see you all. And I thank you so much for coming out here today. 
All right, um, just a little bit more um, information about me. Um, so, uh, let's see, I'm gonna present, keep going here. Uh, myself in present mode. Uh, uh, again, um, my name again is Denise Wright. Um, I'm here as a solar system ambassador, uh, which means that I'm a volunteer for NASA. Uh, there's all of us, we're probably about 800 of us all across the world that actually volunteer for NASA. Um, every September, NASA reaches out and looks for volunteers. Um, through that process, um, we actually go out and do public outreach. We go to libraries, we go and we present in things like these webinars. Um, we go to Earth Day festivals and public festivals and talk a lot about, about what's happening with NASA. Uh, we as uh, NASA volunteers have special access to webinars, so they educate us first and then we go out and educate the public for anywhere from adults to children about everything that's going on with NASA. And I know several of my um, colleagues and friends that are ambassadors are here with us this evening. Um, we're all, we all love space uh, and we're all wanting to share about uh, that passion. Uh, since I am so passionate about um, NASA, I am a founder of an astronomy group here locally um, called the Grand Strand Astronomers. Uh, so we um, get together right now in these kinds of web meetings and uh, go out and observe the night sky. Um, I'm from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. As I said earlier, I was originally from Pennsylvania. I moved south back in 2000. I'm a member of the National Science Teachers Association. Uh, I'm a school teacher who loves STEM and coding and robotics and emerging technology. I'm very passionate about it. Like I said, I taught online before. I run a Girls Who Code Club inside an Astro STEM club. I have a student this evening, Ian Woodamore. He's here with me. He's one of my students. Hello. Say hey. Hi. Uh, Ian is a member of my Astro STEM club. He, he also is in our robotics. He's in my classroom and is great with technology as well. And he's going to talk a little bit from the student perspective about using 3D there this evening. Um, and then last but not least, a member of ISTE. And um, in that corner there, you see that Alvin Clark refracting telescope. It's pretty amazing. Uh, our state capital is in Columbia, South Carolina. That telescope is located there. It's an uh, Alvin Clark refractor, uh, 12 and 3 eighths lens size. It's about 20, len 20 feet in focal length. What we do is, um, I was one of the piloting teachers for that program uh, five years ago, and that telescope is used in a distance learning environment, just like we're in right now. Um, on top of that telescope, we actually have a camera that is mounted, the observatory roof opens, and in a live session, we can observe the moon together, we can observe the night sky, look at Orion, the constellations. Um, we do have an issue, a little bit of issue with city lights because we are downtown, but we can observe things like planets and you know objects that do sort of come into view. It's a great educational instrument. It's back from 1906. Uh, refractors are, are, are typically what we don't use anymore, but because it's so historic, um, we still can use it for education purposes. Um, it was really amazing to be a part of that program and um, being able to use that telescope in distance learning and uh, be one of the piloting teachers. We've been doing this for about five years now. So I'm um, excited to be a part of that as well. Okay, so on with the show. Um, okay, so right now you all have access to this. Um, I would love to, for you to list some benefits of um, virtual reality and um, actually augmented reality, it should be, in education. What do you think are some benefits? You could just write on that whiteboard there. I should say augmented reality. So list some benefits for me that you believe. So in, in it, um, if you're not familiar with augmented reality, Basically, you're able to um, put an overlay in your environment. Um, so you're able to put an object that you would not normally see. Um, I could have um, be standing next to an astronaut right now. Uh, if I use the app of the 3D Bear app, I can be standing next to a SpaceX rocket. Okay. So let's see what we have. We have, uh, you can, I have people exploring math to see real world connections, amazing. 
Uh, you can model real items and show your understanding of it. It's interactive, absolutely. And I we absolutely love it. And it can be used in this remote learning environment, okay? Um, believe it or not, we can, because we want to keep using our 3D Bear because we love that app. Um, can make a model of an environment um, with actually um, being there. All right, great. Uh, so all kinds of benefits can leverage Okay, dangerous materials in a safe way, right? Communication, okay, definitely some great benefits um, to using augmented reality in education, okay? So of course I've listed a few of my own as well. So I'm gonna move everybody this around here. Okay, um, definitely is gonna increase student engagement and curiosity. Um, it's gonna definitely re reinforce spatial models and relationships. It's gonna promote active learning and collaboration among students. It's gonna make learning memorable and hands-on because it's really important. We want our students to be able to recall that information and using augmented reality and virtual reality is gonna allow us to do that. Um, it addresses accessibility issues and different learning styles. Um, so that is also something um, as well. Ian, why do you like, can you tell us a little bit about augmented reality and 3D Bear and why you like it? Can you unmute your mic and tell me a little bit about it? Reality and 3D Bear because it is very, um, it engages students because not only can you add other things, you can bring in your own thing. So if you want to build a model outside of school time, you can do it. And it works with 3D printers and that's really cool. So like, say you have a 3D printer at your home and you want to design something in 3D there, you can do it in 3D printed. Okay, very good, very cool. So yeah, we definitely love 3D Bear. And you know, the big question is, you know, how can we use it in this environment? Okay, we're all teaching remotely. Um, many of us have probably used it face-to-face, -face, or if you haven't used it face-to-face, -face, definitely try it out with students in a classroom, or try it out at home, since we're all at home. Um, so, you know, what are some ways educators can make remote learning more engaging and act interactive? We're gonna use 3D Bear, I'm using Pear Deck this, this evening. Um, my advice for you, all of you, if you're brand new here, is to definitely start small. Don't expect perfection, because we're all learning. Um, you know, how am I using AR currently with remote learning? Um, so basically what I'm using is called a reflect, it's called the reflector app. And um, I'm also using 3D Bear for creation. Um, so basically this is what you do. You download the reflector app on your computer. It's Windows, I'm using reflector. Um, it's Windows as well as Mac compatible. You're gonna plug into your phone, into your device, or you're going to Bluetooth it. You're gonna click on screen mirroring on your phone, and then um, you're gonna be able to share your screen with your students, and then actually be able to open that 3D Bear app and begin creating. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I um, do that. And those are the steps that, that's what my screen is going to look like um, when I start doing that. So I'm gonna actually sort of, you'll see me doing that right now to get, so you can see how I'm accessing it. Here at the bottom, it looks like this little icon. So I'm gonna click on it. And when I click on it, I'm gonna, you'll see that Mac will come up like that, the Mac Air. Okay. On my phone, I'm gonna click a uh, screen mirroring right now. I'm gonna click my, my, um, my, my Mac Air. There goes the iPhone, I could see it. You can also do this with iPad. Um, I'm doing reflecting reflector teacher. So there's like, if you have more than one iPad in a classroom, um, you'll be able to, um, be able to use that and have all the iPads showing up. Okay, so right now, there we go, all right? So you could see my, my actual computer screen. I'm going to access that 3D Bear app right now, okay? And again, I'm just, um, this would be just like us teaching in a classroom or me teaching remotely to my so, students. So right um, now on, yeah. um, on the Zoom screen, we can't see your screen. So maybe you only shared an app Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, let me stop. How about if I end my pair deck and go back? Can you see? Are you or you might want to you might want to unshare your screen and then reshare again. And then reshare again. Okay. Um, 
all doing this one-handed, right? Ah, now we see it. Yeah, you got it. Okay. You see it? Yep. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thank you. And definitely please tell me those kinds of things so I know how to fix <laughs> so we can all follow along as we're going. Okay. So I have the 3D Bear app open right now. Um, if you're brand new to that, if you notice it says discover, there's a bunch of great lesson plans on there. Also, there's a classroom where I can actually, I've been adding students to my classroom. Um, the classroom feature is really great. I won't be doing that tonight, but you could actually collaborate with someone else in the classroom feature. Ian and I were um, actually uh, collaborating and putting a bunch of objects the other day into it and having a good time with it. So we can, we can collaborate together. So what you're going to do is just click that center icon there with the little pyramid okay and you could see my closet <laughs> so right now um, if you take a look at it if you click here at the bottom okay you will actually see all the different objects that you can um, add in 3d bear all right so the one that I am going to focus on um, obviously is space and astronomy um, I'm not logged into my account right now that's why I say subscribe but uh, the one that I'm going to focus on is space and astronomy, which is down there. Okay, so I'm going to click this out and log in. So again, you know, if you want to use this in a remote learning environment, I would really highly suggest um, using this reflecting reflector teacher app because it's going to allow you to share your screen and sort of show these kinds of situations with students. So right now here on my wall. I just added the sun, you can see that. Okay, and then I could, uh, in addition, it's asking me, I can't find the floor, I'm trying to use the wall here. Good lighting. Okay, there we go. And then right now, I can also click this right here and also add, for example, the earth. Okay, so when I click the earth, you'll be able to actually. Um, see that relationship right there. So when you're using this app, my lighting isn't the best right now. This is great to show the seasons of the year, um, relationships like the moon versus, versus um, the moon going around the sun, the different phases of the moon, okay? Um, also tides, when it comes to tides, you can also do that as well. And um, you can also label parts of the moon. Um, I'm going to um, stop sharing for the moment. I'm gonna, Ann, um, can you go in, would you be able to do the screen share and go into the app and, uh, and yeah. um, try it out yeah. for us? I'm able to do that. I, I, I can do that. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Let's see what you come up with. So share application, Chrome, screencast, share. So right yeah. now you can see my screen, correct? Yep, I, we can. So if you click on the 3D Bear app for us. Okay, and you could see as a student exactly what we're doing right now. We're still a lot, we're using 3D Bear in a remote learning environment because Ian is actually going into the app right now himself as well. And we have all our student names there. Can you click on the center there, um, Ian, and just um, go into the actual features. Yep. Can you add a sun for me? All right, great. And let's actually um, add the earth. And can you show where would the positions be right now if we were going to look at the seasons? For example, if we were going to look at um, fall right now, right there in the front, right? Now, obviously, the relationship is a little bit we're going to explain to students too when we're teaching about them that the you know that the sun is um, 93 million miles away from the earth and you know when we look at actual scale models or picture models on a piece of paper it's going to look quite different but if you notice Ian is actually able to can you actually move the earth look at that okay that's really impactful when you think about it he's using 3d bear he's able to manipulate the environment all my students are watching online and he's able to explain what's happening and in real time. So this is a great way um, to use it remotely. Now, Ian, how are you projecting your cell phone to the screen? Can you tell us? So your what Android. I did is I uh, download an app called Screencast. Okay. So if you go into the app 
and then you can click what camp, what you want to do, and then what it does is it gives you the IP address. You can share it. I um pasted it into my web tab, and you just paste it down, and bam, it shows this screen. So, for instance, I wanted to show my rear camera. Okay. All right. So. Right away, we are using augmented reality live and remote learning, okay? So it can be done. And like I said, we'd be having a great time with it in the classroom. Um, and I'd probably be mirroring all their, their iPads to my screen, but you know, this is, we can do it this way as well. And again, I'm, I was just using that reflector app and he's also using his Android, um, his Android app as well. All right, so I'm gonna go back in the presentation and show you some more great stuff for using 3D there. Um, let me go grab my, um, my PowerPoint. Um, so hopefully you could see that. Um, so, uh, we talked about the reflector app. It's definitely something to try out and give it a shot. Um, there's also a bunch of screen mirroring, um, devices out there. Um, you could also screen mirror through QuickTime player. Um, if you open your QuickTime player on your Mac, and if you click on, um, new recording, there is where your camera is, where that dot is to record your screen. There's a drop down menu and you can select your phone there. And there's, that's, there's no charge to do it in QuickTime Player as well. So that's another option and it's a free option. So definitely try um, it out on QuickTime Player as well. Okay, so I'm gonna move, it, move us forward. Can everybody see my screen or no? Are we yes. good? Yep, yep, right. we're good. All right, so, you know, Ian just showed us some great um, ways of moving the earth around the sun. Again, we can do the moon, we can add the moon in, the moon phases, we can do the tides, um, we can show all those kinds of relationships. And it's so much more impactful than just being on a digital screen and just on a piece of paper, because he's actually able to interact with the content. And that's what we want um, with our students. So um, collaboratively, we can actually share things on uh, all our drawings on Padlet, um, we can uh, share things on Flipgrid, which is just, it, it's a website that actually uploads videos. Um, as a teacher, I could set up a YouTube channel and have all my student videos on YouTube. Um, we can make a Google Doc and put our links on Google on a Google um, Google Doc, or if we make any videos or pictures and share the Google Doc together. Um, also, there's something called Book Creator. So, and that'll give us a public link and we're able to share out all our augmented reality and 3D bear creations. All right, so this was um, a Padlet. Can you guys see that? Just keep letting me know what you can see. Yep, yeah, everything's good. Okay. All right, so um, Ian did a great job and he put the earth there and he used the text feature in 3D there. He put three facts about the earth. Um, it's the only planet not named after a god. Earth's rotation is gradually slowing down, he's saying. It's the densest planet in our solar system. So Ian did a great job on that. Um, I also have um, a student by the name of Maggie. Um, she made us a video, um, if I can keep moving our... Um, we can watch that right now. It's a really short video. Okay, and she actually showed us Mercury right in her bedroom, which is wonderful. Okay, um, this is something else that I did. Um, I sort of love um, CAD, um, computer-aided design, and so do my students. Um, a platform that I love to use in middle school because my students are anywhere from ages 11, 12, 13, to 14 years old is, is Tinkercad. Um, that's what we choose to use. Um, you can use, you can, every um, 3D printing kind of platform has its own creation software. Um, but anyway, I made a NASA because of a NASA Solar System Ambassador, a NASA insignia there in Tinkercad, okay? And then what I was um, able to do was um, download that in Tinkercad in an STL file, which is a 3D printing file. Now, 3D Bear works with two platforms. It works with Sketchfab as well as Thingiverse. So what I did was I took my STL file and I actually uploaded it to Thingiverse. 
Um, so let me show you, I can probably show you how I did that as well. So that'll give you some ideas about how to do that. All right. Okay. Well, Care Deck was good for a while, but. <laughs> All right. Where do I have that at? Okay. So I'm going to share my screen right now. I'll hit the percent button. Okay, so this is where um, the Thingiverse, everybody can see that? Yes? Okay, so um, my Thingiverse account um, looks like this. And again, and you could design in any platform at whatsoever. Um, Thingiverse has its own design platform. Tinkercad has its own design platform. And um, right now, I know Mitch, you made a mention that Tinkercad is coming on board. Is that correct with 3D Bear? Yes, there'll be a button. If you're using 3D Bear, there'll be a button in Tinkercad where you can say send to 3D Bear. Okay. That'll so be in I, about three or four weeks. Right. If I click on my designs, you could see them all there. I've got the Apollo 17 landing site. I've got the NASA um, uh, symbol that I created. I have a Stingray that I made um, for my school mascot. Um, and this is actually the Kepler Space Telescope that actually uh, detects exoplanets that's no longer in working right now, but um, it is there. Um, there's also some 3D files um, on uh, the James Webb Telescope. Um, and again, I made a bunch of videos on this presentation that I'll share at the end that sh that goes through step by step on how I've done all of these, all of these things today that I'm talking about. But basically, you click on your create button and your upload. So that's how you upload your STL file. Okay, and that's the files that I've uploaded. So um, also NASA, um, since I am a solar system ambassador, NASA has a variety of 3D print files. If you click on 3D printing. Um, these are all files that you can actually download for public domain. Um, it has everything from the rover to the different landing sites. Um, these landing sites, if those of you that are doing informal education or those of you that are solar system ambassadors or you're doing any kind of out public outreach, um, they're wonderful because um, I've had a few students and outreach that are visually impaired. And being able to print this out on a 3D printer and having their hands touch the actual landing site um, and doing that in 3D printing is pretty amazing. So these are the STL files. And you just click on it and then you download. If you look right here, um, where you, I have to move my cameras there. If you download this right here, that'll open up the zip file and the STL file will be inside. So then that's basically what I did. So download the STL file, um, and then you're going to um, access Thingiverse, make sure that you have um, that added in. You're going to go into your 3D Bear file, your 3D Bear app, and there's a place for where it says Thingiverse. Okay, you're gonna, you're gonna walk into your Thingiverse account inside the actual 3D Bear app. Okay. Um, also, when I've uploaded my objects, just to make it easy to find, I said, for example, um, the Mars Curiosity rover landed on the Gale Crater. So I put Gale Crater dash right. So that when I'm searching it in Thingiverse, it, it's really easy to find and easy for me to see. Okay. And then uh, once the file is there, you're just going to click on it and it'll actually show up in 3D Bear. So let me show you what that looks like. So this right here was actually Gale Crater. Okay, that's where the Mars Curiosity rover landed. Um, it's an STL file, like I just said. I uploaded it to 3D Bear, and um, that's what it looks like. And I turned it gray in color. So to actually be able to see the landing site visually um, is pretty amazing and in this perspective, okay? Also, there's one of my students. Um, we printed those on our 3D printer. Um, I received a grant from um, GE Additive and um, those were the landing sites printed. So, um, and economically, if you don't have a 3D printer, okay, and that's something that you can't afford for your classroom, you can actually see it in augmented reality and that's an affordable option. So um, that's how I, um, I did that. Should I, does anybody want me to, to do that with the, with the actual reflector app? I could show you that in detail. Should I show people, Mitch? What do you think? If you're brave, go ahead and show them. <laughs> no, I'm, I am brave. I'm going to be brave right now. Okay. okay. 
I'm going to stop sharing and then I'm going to open up the app again. So I'm, okay. I'm being daring right now in, in remote learning. Okay. We gotta, we gotta be daring, I guess. Okay. So I'm going to open up my, um, let's see, I'm going to open up my, ref my app. Let's see if this is going to work. Share screen. Um, okay. Can everybody see my screen right now? Yep. Okay, great. So um, if you click here at the bottom, okay, and then I'm clicking over where the pyramid is and the cube and the little circle, okay, and what you're going to do is hit the plus sign, okay, um, the plus sign, and there it says, all 3D Bear import Thingiverse Sketchfab. Now, I haven't imported Mitch, to be honest, through the actual app itself. I've done it the way I've done it on the, the actual Thingiverse in, right. in the actual computer. So if you actually did something and saved it to your uh, Google Drive or saved it to okay. a Dropbox or something, and then you clicked it, clicked import, you could bring it in directly from your Google Drive or um, or a file on your your iPhone or iPad, um, you can do it directly. But okay. um, you could also export it to to, um, to Thingiverse or to Sketchfab for that matter, and bring it in from there. Okay, great. So um, if I click on Thingiverse, okay, it's going to ask me to log in to my my Thingiverse account that I created. So I'm going to try to do that now. Um, it probably would have been easier if I had an iPad here tonight because it would have been a little bit larger in size. Um, and my vision is going as I'm aging here. Um, let's see. I enjoy, I can see it better on that screen than on this one. Okay. And I'm going to put my. And what's the password to your bank account? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Okay, and it's going to ask me about the 3D Bear app. I'm going to say yes. Okay, and there we go. There's all my wonderful 3D objects that I've been playing around and having a great time with. Okay. So you want to try? And, so um, here's here's one more thing to try. Under search, okay. type in okay. 3DBM1. So this is a collection that 3D Bear created in Thingiverse of items that you might need on Mars if you were creating a colony. No, sp no space, no space. Just 3D, Ooh, okay. 3DB, 3DBM1. Uh -huh. Oops, ah. Let's hopefully that's going to open back yeah. up for me. Um, and again, you could see my collection of NASA, um, NASA ones that I love. All kinds of um, augmented reality stuff there. Uh, and that's going to ask me to log in. Let's see, open. All right, so there's okay. So okay. there's a bunch of um, my stuff there. I've got the Mars, um, not the Mars, the moon, uh, the first footprint on the moon. I've got the rovers. Um, the James Webb there is at the bottom, which I'm very passionate about the James Webb because that's going to be replacing the Hubble. We'll be launching that in New Guinea. Um, what's amazing about this too is with the James Webb, um, if you go to look at it, um, you could actually even zoom in on the mirrors. Um, what's really interesting in talking to students about the mirrors is the fact that um, they're made of beryllium. So students think when they think mirror, they think it's automatically like um, glass, but it's not. It's actually, um, let's see if I can put this on the floor. No, it's not coming up for me. I'm gonna try one more time. Can you see that now? Y'all, can you see that? No? Yes, yes. Okay, I can see it in my screen. Um, and I could rotate it like this. Okay, and then if I zoom in here on the actual uh, mirrors, I'm trying here. Woo! Okay, let's see. If I zoom in there, those, those are mirrors that I was talking about. Um, they're all, um, they're, they're actually um, coated with a gold coating called beryllium. And um, they're going to help us see um, the beginnings of the universe. And this is actually a sun shield on the side. So look at that perspective that I'm getting um, in 3D Bear versus, you know, um, versus just looking at it on a, on, a, on a screen or a piece of paper. So it's pretty amazing um, as well. So, and again, there's this, the Dragon, um, space, there's a SpaceX launch um, that's coming up on March the 27th. We're going to be launching um, a SpaceX rocket um, with our first astronauts on board. 
We're going to be doing some human space flight out of Kennedy coming up next month. I'm sending on SpaceX, a commercial, a commercial company, um, to the ISS. So that's really exciting wow. as well. So there's that actual rocket right there. And then you can also change the color. If you click the word color, you can change the dot objects and select the objects as well. You can make a scene like Mitch was talking about earlier. Um, there's all sorts of things. So I'll, I'm going to go through all my ideas with you um, as well. Should, should I try to grab that collection? Let's try one more time for you, Mitch. So it's okay. actually 3. 3D B. Okay. 3D B M1. Is there a space? Well, that's probably the one I do with it. Oh, is that it? Yeah. That's it. And there's also a 3D B M2. Okay. So yeah, you can see all the different um, objects that he put in there to make a space habitat. Okay. And again, they're, it's pretty amazing because you can 3D print it and also see your object in uh, augmented reality. And there's not too many more apps out there that actually do that. So that's pretty cool stuff for sure. And there was a question. Can you show um, the, the objects that are in the math collection? Okay, the ones that are in the math collection. Right, Ian, the um, the sphere, the pyramid. Oh think? yeah, um, Ian, do you want do you want to um, try to show people? Do you want to try? Uh, sure. Let me just uh, get everything set up. Or, or do you want me to do it? Is it easier? I uh, I can do it. It's more fun ways. Okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's a lot of great shapes. Um, so we're talking astronomy tonight, but um, obviously this is definitely interdisciplinary across all subject areas. Um, and I'm going to show you some of my, I'll list some couple more of my ideas that I have that I'm using it for astronomy for. And um, I'll get that. So Ian, do you want to get to that, maybe that app and then we'll come back to that? Are you all ready? Are you ready or no? I'm in 3D there. Okay. Okay, I think you're like sort of, for me, you're slowing down a little bit. Okay, you're lagging a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the rest of the astronomy and then, um, okay, you're there. Okay, great. I can see your screen. Can you go down to where the shapes are at? Click, click that center dial right there. And there's all kinds of shapes there. Can you go all the way up, see all the different shapes for teaching geometry and math? Um, so there's what, there's all the different objects. If you go straight across, there's farm animals, there's different people, there's um, different for PE and health. You're going really fast, Ian. Um, there's actually um, items for nutrition. Um, there's all kinds of different great objects that you can place. Um, also, I've been in the landscape one before and went outside and actually added landscaping to my environment outside to see what certain trees or plants would look like. Um, so that's been really neat as well. Okay. All right. You rock. I appreciate your help. Okay. I'm going to start talking a little bit more about astronomy and um, using this app. Okay, so let's come back to this. So again, we printed these files out in th um, actually by hand as well. And uh, so, uh, and I, I actually talked about this whole process right there in that video. So at the end of this presentation tonight, if you like, how did she do that? And, you know, I upload what to where and um, it's all outlined in those videos that I'll give to Mitch for this presentation this evening so you can watch my video. I go through the step-by-step -step process in the video. Um, so, and I just wanted to make an impact on you. Um, I don't know if you're still in this presentation or not, but, you know, I was going to say, hey, draw the earth and the sun on this, on this pear deck. It's not quite the same, is it, as what Ian did for us um, in 3D Bear, is it? Okay. So um, I don't know if anybody's out there doing that this mo this evening, but I just wanted to show you that as well. So did anybody draw on that or, is, or, or we're, are we all out of the pear deck at this point? I think we're pretty much out of it, right? I guess. Um, it's a little bit hard jumping between pear deck and the reflector app. So, um, all right. So, but anyway, hopefully we saw that with Ian. I'm going to keep moving forward if that's okay. Um, there's a video 
again, on just what Ian did as well. Um, I'm talking to Ian through remote learning. I'm telling him to position that earth in the different places in the um, revolution around the sun, okay? So that's important. Also, where the moon would be in the different phases, how does that moon go around um, the earth? Why do we have the phases, the tides? We can also label the moon in 3D Bear and actually um, look at the moon in, in detail and increase the size as well. Um, we're gonna draw telescopes. Um, a really great thing is um, comparing and contrasting telescopes. Um, many students, um, I'll play this one. Many students um, think of one type of telescope, okay? When we think of a telescope, we think of a light telescope, but we all know if we are interested or any of astronomers that are in here right now, um, we know that there are radio telescopes and there are light telescopes because in astronomy, we use different forms of light in the electromagnetic spectrum to see different objects. We can't see a black hole with our eyes. Okay, but we know a black hole is there because we're looking at x-rays. So this is just a little video. If you can see this, I'll see. Another great concept to talk about in astronomy is telescopes. Okay, that's the main object of astronomers that we use all the time. This right here is a special kind of telescope. Um, I found it in Sketchfab, which is the um, 3D um, or STL file that you can print. They have a wide array of objects that you could bring into augmented reality. It's also nice is that uh, if you wanted to get a bird's eye view, you can get really close and see all the steps and how we're able to service that dish. Uh, you're able to look here. Now, um, when you're teaching students, this is one type of telescope. Okay, if I added a different type of telescope, like this one, for example, okay, uh, let's bring that one down here, okay, or that one there on the table, it's pretty big. How is that telescope different than this one, okay? I mean, how are they different? Let's take a look at this one again, okay? So compare and contrasting objects in virtual reality, uh, it gives students a better spatial perspective, it gives students a little bit of a, a better understanding, increases their curiosity. Um, this telescope right here um, is a radio telescope. Um, that's why the dish is so large. Um, they're typically found in places like the desert so that they're not um, experiencing any kind of radio interference from any other objects in the electromagnetic spectrum like TV and x-ray. So they're found very secluded in the desert and we use them to collect uh, radio information from stars planets. Um, it is believed that our solar system started 3.6 billion years ago, and these radio telescopes can still collect uh, those radio waves. So that's very different than this telescope that we just, I have up to my ceiling right now, um, this one. So then I talk a little bit more about reflecting telescopes and the idea that they use light. Also, the larger the lens size, we all know as astronomers, um, the more light we collect, the further we can see. Um, a lot of students, a big misconception with telescopes is, oh, it's magnification, it's magnification. I'm like, no, magnification students have not, has nothing to do with us understanding how telescopes work. Um, we want to have as big of a lens as possible to collect light because telescopes are light collectors. So being able to compare and contrast objects, especially scientific objects, and those two dish, those two objects are very different, okay? And they collect light in different ways. Um, as we said that we have the radio telescope and we have the actual light telescope. So that's another great example of using it in astronomy. So Denise, I just, I think you might be advancing on your Google slides and not on Pear Deck because Pear Deck isn't moving. Okay. All which is right. fine, which is fine. <laughs> um, if, actually, I sort of abandoned Pear Deck. So if we want to, if we want to go into just- No, I think this is fine. This is good. <laughs> okay. And I apologize because I was trying to use the reflector app and the Pear Deck and trying to get everything rolling. But um, again, um, remote learning um, in process and trying to learn at the same time as well. So. <laughs>
But um, this object here um, is a celestial sphere. We could talk about sidereal time um, very easily with this object. And um, just like, you know, we have that stagnant picture, I'm going to fast forward. I'm not going to play this whole video for you. But if you look um, here. So you don't see one of these um, too often. Um, and a celestial globe back during um, hundreds of years ago, and even now, helps us tell time. Um, Sidereal time. Sidereal means the time of the stars. Um, so sidereal time is based upon the Earth's rate of rotation, um, based and on big stars. Okay, so it's very much more impactful for sure looking at the object in virtual re or augmented reality versus just looking at stagnant on a piece of paper. Um, I talked to you a little bit already about CAD and Tinkercad and actually uploading a, an object um, in the 3D Bear app. So we talked a little bit about that. Um, also, um, something else that you can create is a solar system walk. Um, if you are, um, most of us that are uh, NASA solar system ambassadors or do NASA outreach, um, we have access to a lot of different things through NASA wavelength and curriculum. Um, and uh, you can go outside. This is great for our, our even our remote learning um, right now and walk the solar system. Okay. And there's an actual chart right there. The sun is probably right there. We start with the sun is about like an eight inch ball is about the size of an eight inch ball. Then we walk um, basically 10 steps. And we put our next planet down, which is Mercury, Venus, and then we actually can go outside and walk and give students a really great perspective about the actual solar system and um, and uh, understanding the distance and how vast it is. Okay, so to sort of make it 3D bear, um, you know, change it up and make it a little bit um, more interactive with the use of 3D bear, um, you can have your students um, just like we have right here. Um, create a video, okay, in 3D Bear um, with that particular planet, and then place a QR code um, on their sign, okay? So when they're going to walk that solar system, they actually have, they hit those, each of those points. Um, and if you use your cell phone, if you have an iPhone, if you use the camera app, it um, allows you to, it works just like a, a QR scanner. So um, you're able to scan the actual um, code and the video would come right up. And you can actually have your students create this and then recycle this, these solar system walks for um, public festivals that you may have. Um, you could also have your students remotely that are learning right now. Um, you could provide nine of these for all, well, eight of these, I guess we, Pluto is sort of, you know, not a planet mm. anymore, I guess. <laughs> but eight of these, have them actually walk the solar system out have the videos there, um, scan them with their phone, use 3D Bear and create that video kind of, um, you know, um, doc documentary. And it's really impactful when you have a student's voice telling you the facts um, about the actual uh, planets. So if I use my cell phone and I scan that QR code, it says open in YouTube, so I can actually open that right up. And uh, there comes the video from my student that talks about Mercury. Okay, so those are, that's a really um, fun way to incorporate 3D Bear, augmented reality, and have some um, great ideas. Um, I did include the NGSS standards here for middle school as well as high school um, in this presentation today. Um, so in case you need those at the end of this, um, and I just wanted to go, I'm going to go through these really quickly again um, to summarize what I talked about today a little bit. Um, so these are some of my ideas using this app. You can create a historical scene. Um, you can study these relationships like the seasons, the moon phases, the system, the different systems um, and the tides. So it's differently a great way to study relationships and have that interactive perspective. Compare and contrast telescopes. Um, view historical objects in astronomy. We looked at that celestial sphere. That was pretty awesome. Um, create a space object in CAD and view it in augmented reality using 3D Bear. We have the solar system walk um, that I just talked about as well. And um, I just made this because we are celebrating next month. We're gonna be sending our first astronauts um, on commercial space flights, space, uh, SpaceX. So there you have is your little astronaut there, um, as well as um, the date that we're potentially launching, which is May the 27th and um, a SpaceX rocket right next to it. We're gonna actually send two astronauts up on that rocket coming up next month. So these are just some really um, overall ways 
of incorporating um, astronomy and using 3D Bear and really um, being able to use it in a remote learning environment, okay? And I know I went through a lot of information today, um, but even if you go ahead and just screen share, okay, and just like I did today and show students um, different objects in augmented reality remotely, um, or just like Ian did for me, if Ian wants to go through the app again and show it one last time, um, that Ian can actually screen share with all of us and show us what he's learning and the different concepts because all my students in this remote environment are watching Ian interact with the AR and seeing that, okay, hands-on. So, um, how are you doing, Ian? I, I am uh, doing good. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've been doing a lot of the talking. Miss Wright's been doing a lot of talking. So, can you give us some um, last words here on, on um, I'm going to stop screen sharing. And again, I will provide this to Mitch with all my videos and ideas to use um, 3D Bear and astronomy. Uh, last words. Um, I just <laughs> want to say that 3D Bear is very uh, interactive, as in you can make many things, um, and that it's very fun to play with, and um, it's a it's immersive for the classroom. Everyone can, uh, if all they have to do is download it and then they can use it. It's some. Um, yeah, we could talk about the great impact theory with that dinosaur right there impacting the earth, right? So that's another, and, and how, how did we, um, you know, what happened to the earth and, and the big asteroid that hit, right? So there's some yep, more astronomy being pulled in there. Down. That dinosaur, um, everyone seems to love that T-Rex dinosaur, for sure. Okay, and there's tons of objects underneath there that he's showing you. And again, um, it's just a really unique, wonderful app and it's a wonderful way of learning. And we have lots of fun at school and we love using it. And, um, and it, it, you know, it's, it's definitely brings us um, a different level of learning, a lot more curiosity, um, a lot more engagement, yeah, I mean, and a whole lot more fun, right, Ian? Yes? It's curi uh, make curiosity, you can make whatever you want, like I did. Monkey, right? <laughs> Tyrannosaurus, right? Um, uh, uh, yeah. Yes, Monkey, all right. Tyrannosaurus Rex, that's really I've got it all I've got to really say okay great you were fabulous and I'm just going to share you my um, my contact information in case you need to contact me at any point um, Ian can you stop she uh, screen sharing with me and I'll share my um, I'm on Twitter so if you want to follow me on Twitter and I know some of my uh, solar system ambassador friends are here out supporting me tonight thank you so much I see you in here Mark <laughs> and uh, my other friends as well. Um, and uh, uh, again, uh, the technology, I'm still working on it. I did use Pear Deck as well as 3D Bear in, in remote learning today. Um, so let me keep forwarding through. These are the videos that I was talking about um, earlier, um, the CAD objects, the solar system walk. Um, also, if you would like to contact me, um, Again, I'm located in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm a NASA JPL, go NASA. We love everything NASA. Um, if you wanna follow me on Twitter, I'm at Denise C. Wright. So I'll, I shared out a bunch of examples over the last few days getting ready for this webinar. Um, and um, again, this is a great impactful app that is gonna make uh, learning lots of fun. Um, I am, I enjoy teaching at gmail.com if you'd like to email me personally. And um, thank you so much for coming out and uh, rolling with the changes this evening with me with Pear Deck and, and sort of going using that reflector app and all that. But um, I do think that reflector app is really great that I was able to go in and actually show you um, exactly how I'm using it remotely. And hopefully, like again, my biggest piece of advice is to go out and try it out. Um, if you, once this, you know, at Bob Irish goes away and we're out there teaching publicly and doing outreach, um, this reflector app is great, even if you um, are in a big crowd of students or crowd, crowd of people that you're presenting um, anything about NASA and you're able to um, use your phone and use 3D Bear and put an augmented rally and put it on a big overhead projector screen. So um, thank you so much.
Mitch, thank you. Have any questions? Well, so, so somebody's saying, does 3D Bear a paid app? And 3D Bear is always free to download. Uh, there's um, the uh, planetary collection, and about half the collections are you have to subscribe in order to use. Although there's a 30-day free trial when you when you download it. Um, but you can also use Sketchfab, which has millions of items, and Thingiverse, which also has millions of items in the free version. So you can set up just about any scene. Um, to set up classes, you need the paid version. I think the paid version, um, it's, it's either $9.99 a month, or I believe it's $100 a year, which allows you, um, I'm going to say 20 students, but it might be 30 students. So when you subscribe, you 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 can have 30 students also using it. Right, but even for outreach, like I said, it's great for that as well. And just being able to reflect that up on that on that screen like that, that's awesome. And then getting other students in the in the room to download it, using it like we did tonight in remote learning, um, showing concepts like Ian was doing this evening, um, and you know, um, and it's just you know, lots of fun. So yeah. Any other questions? Do we have any questions that I've missed out on answering? Well, there were a couple questions that came up, but we, they were answered in the chat. So, um, and you, your examples were great. I, I love them. Thank you. <laughs> I, know. Um, I, I have to get a little bit better with the pear deck and the reflector and Oh, all it's so that. hard to juggle. That's I why know. I was you know. trying. And, and again, um, if anyone is out there as well and you're presenting in a classroom, um, Pear Deck is great as well, you know, but it's also hard to see what you're seeing. Um, it worked great. It works great with my students today. I mean, we did Pear Deck first and then we do Agamemnon and Reality after that. So and, I was and Ian was, was great. Yeah. Ian was fantastic. Thank you, Ian. Yeah. Uh, you're going to go places, I think. Oh, he is amazing. Uh, I think next year, uh, definitely another year on the robotics team, no doubt. Ah. And, uh, definitely going to be in our technology fair. He loves presenting. He's really good at speaking. Um, he helps me out a lot during my remote sessions, takes over the screen a lot, and talks to the students a lot about what we're learning and shares a lot of information. Um, you're wonderful. Ian, do you have any, any last words for us this evening? You Download rock. 3D Bear. What? Download 3D Bear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, it's okay. about 56, and I appreciate you um, going with the changes this evening and um, and being here and showing up. It was a lot of fun, and I really, um, yes, thank you, Ian. Denise, thank, thank you, you so much. Ian, right. thank you. Um, everybody, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed this. We're going to archive this and also post the slides up on the EdChat Interactive website. We're actually having a session tomorrow on um, – games that teachers love using with their students. So, uh, you, you know, you can sign up for other sessions as well. They're always free. So thank you very much. Good night from EdChat Interactive and hope to see you at another event. All right, good night. Right. Great to meet you, Mark. Great to see you. Thank you for coming and supporting me. Thank you, everybody. Hey, thank you for all my SSA friends that are here. I, I appreciate you so much. All right, take care, everybody. Okay. All right, Good night. Bye.